Hey everyone, so today's my day off and I enjoyed it. It's a beautiful day outside. I'll see if I can show you. It's cold, but it's really nice outside. You see the blue skies. This is the view from my balcony down Young Street. And it's such a beautiful day. Our library is closed for 12 to 18 months because they're doing repairs, which we'll have to just wait on. But we do have other libraries close by, so that's nice. But I just wanted to show you the day. It's such a beautiful day today. And it was nice to get out and to go out. I went out with my friend Esme. And my plants are doing well. The connection is slow today. I don't know why. But hopefully we can get through this. So I wanted to uh, continue my talk on the book I'm doing, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. And I've been waiting anxiously to start my new position. I'm looking forward to it because it's been a long time coming. And with fanatics, all of us were devastated. All of us were very upset when they took our jobs away. And... All of us were asking why, like if we did a good job and if we did well, why would you take our jobs away? And when you're in that headspace, everybody was crying, everyone was upset, everyone was like, we did a good job, how can they do this to us? But John Maxwell does say if you have too many losses that can affect you negatively, you have to keep moving forward because if you don't, it just becomes too hard. It becomes too hard on your mind, on your body, on your spirit. And it's the same way when we lose people, when people die. We miss their physical presence. We miss having them around. We miss their voice. We miss seeing their smile, talking to them, sitting with them, having their company. And you can't replace that. Yes, we can keep the memories, we can keep the good times and the bad times in our hearts, but you can't replace that physical contact. So today when I went out with my friend is me, I haven't seen her for a long time. It was a joy to me because just to have her company, even just to sit together in the park, to go for a walk together, you need that human touch. You need that human contact. And for me, it's hard. Losing my mom was hard when she got remarried. I know she's still there and I know she's still my mom, but it's different. She's married now. She has other priorities. She has other things that she puts first. So that was a loss. But John Maxwell says, when you think about it, our life is about loss. We lose the warmth of the womb when we're born. Then when we go to school, we lose that comfort of being with our parents. Then when we go to high school, we lose being in junior school. And so it goes, the losses of life, but we don't think about it that way. We think about it as what we're looking forward to. So one of the things that I did when we lost this fanatics campaign, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to sit and focus on the loss. I'm going to focus on what's coming, looking for my next opportunity. And to help me to transition, I'm going to start telling my customers I'm rolling off this campaign. Because some of the fans and the customers, they do ask when you speak to them, can I get you next time? You were helpful, you were nice, you were kind, you were compassionate, I want to talk to you. So I used to tell them, you can't talk to me. I don't have a direct extension. We don't work that way. You should go to whoever takes the call and everyone will help you. And they'll say, no, but I spoke to 10 people before you. I spent three hours on the phone today. I spent 20 minutes on the chat and nobody helped me. Only you helped me. So it's very hard because sometimes the fans start crying 
and then you don't know what to do and you try to comfort them you try to say to them you know what we've all got the same skills i'm glad i was able to help you but it, we have to all deal with the calls the same way and so i started telling them my job is finishing on this i'm looking forward to another campaign and as i told them it made it easier for me as well because i accepted the loss I accepted the loss of the team, I accepted the loss of the work, I accepted the loss that came with it. And also we had a month's notice, so that helped. It wasn't like with Sprint and with Klarna, where they just said, we're taking you off now. And then my operations manager, Mohammed, said, you have to stay at home for we look for something else for you. So I had time, it wasn't an abrupt, ending. I had a month to come to terms with the loss. And so John Maxwell is just teaching us in this book about how to come to terms with the loss, taking responsibility, focusing on learning, having hope, the motivation for learning, the pathways of learning being teachable, and expecting losses, expecting adversity, because I think especially when we come here from Africa or we come here from countries where we don't have all the luxuries available, we expect adversity. We don't expect it to be easy all the time. And then with bad experiences, we learn from them and we change. That's the price of learning is to change. Because if we don't change, we'll become dinosaurs. And our maturity is the value of learning. So losses will never leave us the same, whether it's the loss of a parent, like me with my dad in childhood, or the loss of a singer, like Elvis Presley, or the loss of a home. Like when I moved from Rosewell Gardens to here, it was a, a loss for me, because that was my home, I owned it. I was not renting from somebody. This is somebody else's property. I don't do whatever I like, although my landlord is very good and he's told me, you decorate, you do whatever you like, this is your home. And I appreciate that. I don't own this home. So it's that was a loss for me. Losing my permanent jobs over the years, those were losses. Losing my contracts, those were losses. So. You go through losses in life, but you learn from them and you change. And one of the artists that I like and who I appreciate is Sting. Because with a lot of charities and non-profits and all of that, they're focusing on Africa. They're focusing on India. They're focusing on nations that are struggling. Where leaders, political leaders are not necessarily the best. Yes, we are trying to help. But if they are not helping themselves and their citizens, it gets very frustrating. I like Sting because when we, in, we went through our hardships in Canada, Sting came and he went to the automotive factories. He did the last ship here. And that was a motivation for me because he spoke about how things changed in Ireland, in the shipbuilding areas and how it was devastating for the communities and how they adjusted and when i went to see that play it was very moving because people again left with no choices they made hard decisions including women who decided to marry or to join their lives with men who were wealthy or who had means because otherwise they would land up being on the street and so for me, it's very, very hard to be as qualified as I am, to be as nice as I am, and to not be able to get a good paying job. It's very frustrating. And that's one of the reasons my mother was asking me, why don't you get married? When she contacted my father's friend in England. And I said, to her, you must be kidding. If you're gonna make those decisions, talk to me first. Don't go and ask them because I will not agree to it. So I learned from Sting and I was very touched. I was very touched that he cared about Canada, that he came here, 
that he visited us. Because a lot of people do come, but they don't make time for people. And I had wanted to see him, I had wanted to talk to him, but by the time I asked him, like, can I go and see Sting? They said he'll come out at the back entrance, but he's not seeing anyone. So it would have been nice for me. I'm like the Americans in that way. Like in America, if you go to the shows and you go to the plays and that, you can go to the back where the stars leave and they'll come out, they'll sit, they'll talk to you, they'll sign autographs. So I never got to meet him, but I did get to see him. I was sitting in the second row, right at the front, in front of the stage. I tried to take some photos, but my camera froze. So I didn't get any nice ones of him, but he saw me, he knew I was there. And so I like Sting, I like what he did. He's one of my favorite human rights artists. And so I learned from him. And life is always about learning and changing and growing and dealing with our losses. It's very hard. It's, even now they're talking about Mulroney and how he led the movement to end apartheid. He didn't lead it. He took a stand and that's appreciated. But Canada started apartheid. So they can't say he led it. He didn't lead it. Mandela led it. And there were other leaders, African leaders. Zimbabwe played a big part in the fall of apartheid. So they shouldn't give themselves too much credit. They don't treat us properly here. They don't treat me properly. Definitely not. When you come here from South Africa, from Zimbabwe, they don't treat you properly. Anyway, so that's our losses. We learn from our losses, we grow and we change. It's hard to accept loss, but if we've got something else to look forward to, and eventually we lose our lives in order to be born into eternal life, we have to accept loss as part of life and learn from it. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I hope that through my speaking, I'll be able to earn more money and to get referrals and to set up my business so that I don't have to be dependent on other people. That's my goal.